then cool. So, uh, we're going to start off. I'm not going to show you all the games in a row. I'm going to introduce them one by one. And we're going to start out with mm, one of the ones that I would include in the not quite so good camp. Not to start out negatively, but we should we should start out somewhere and then work our way up, I think, mm -hmm. towards, yes. towards glory. You know what I mean? Uh, so, this game, I'm just going to get rid of the placeholder. A boom. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you recognize it from that little loading screen. Let's wait till it actually turns into the game itself. Thinking, loading, please don't freeze. It looks like it's been stretched, actually, that image. I don't like the look of that. You know how sometimes they don't resize the graphic art for the iPad? iPad version. So they just like, take mm. they take that version, the iPhone version. Oh, it does. Game. It looks weird. And they just stretch it out like you're watching a film in the wrong aspect ratio. That stuff mm. does my head in. The, um, font looks, the fonts look fine and stuff, but... Uh, am I sure? I'm way sure. So uh, the title's up now. It's blown, the, blown our cover. Go on. Flash Out 2. All right. Now, mm. yeah, Flash Out, the original one, happened, and we went... <laughs> and then Flash Out 2 happened, and we went... <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good starting point because it highlights the gap in the market, if you see what I mean. This is what stepped in to fill that wipeout-shaped hole on mm -hmm. the iOS uh, market. The App Store doesn't have... A decent Wipeout version, and obviously Studio Liverpool aren't putting official Wipeout on here, so it was never going to come. Like we've been talking about with Nintendo games, Nintendo isn't putting its real games, so for example you can't get Pokemon on iOS, so there are lots of companies that step in and do a kind of Pokemon-esque sort of game. This is the equivalent, this is a Wipeout-esque sort of game. I don't want to learn how to play, because I think I've played this before, in fact I know I've played this before. Let's go into career mode and see how Have a look is. about. Now, it's been a while since I've played this. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be on tilty controls or not. Um, but, oh yeah, it's done in a kind of comic book style. So they show you the story with these little panels, quasi-animated panels, which actually look alright. They're sort of fairly smart. And to be honest, look better really than the game itself. Because mm. uh, <laughs> this, this game's got some issues. Which we're about to explore. So, global ranking. I have no global ranking. Let's do the Ignite Trophy and let's fly around Los Angeles. Play. Awesome. So, I don't know if we've got any Wipeout fans in the chat window. Oh, sound off. Now, Scream. obviously, I'm keeping my eye on the chat window at the moment, as is Danny, our community manager, who is App Spy in the chat. James, you're playing on your iPad. Um, so, obviously, if you are a Wipeout fan or if you like futuristic races, then let us know what futurist futuristic races you like in the chat. Um, there was that one... F Zero, that was on Nintendo consoles. That was good. Wipeout <laughs> was good. Extreme G was good. Uh, yeah, Extreme G was if all right. you could name any other futuristic races, I will give you a virtual hug. Um, there is one other one where you could race across the entire world, which I always try and remember the name of whenever we play a realist, like a futuristic race game like this. Oh, yeah. where you could you could literally fly across the entire world, and they boasted that it was the biggest race course in the world because it included the entire world. It was rubbish. Um, uh, <laughs> so, that's a neat trick, but obviously not such a neat But trick. obviously, yeah. It was it was loads and loads of track, but nothing very interesting on any of it. Um, so, Flash Out 2 then. Because um, you see, when we're watching this, because obviously I've played Flash Out yep. and, and Flash Out 2, when you watch it, you sort of think, yeah, it's Wipeout. It looks like Wipeout. This looks brilliant. This is exactly what I want. But it's not quite wipe out is it it's not it's not nearly at the same caliber of quality is it that's the problem with this one so when you're dealing with these futuristic races one of the things that's very important one of the things that wipeout nailed more than any other franchise that attempted it with the exception maybe of burnout 3 is speed like that real sense that you're traveling far faster than the human body can really tolerate yeah. Uh, and requires you to have Jedi-like reflexes when you're trying to turn corners and anticipate uh, the next chicane coming up. The problem is, trying to get that onto iOS has proved a bit tricky because the moment you try and make it look pretty, which again, the Wipeout games are incredibly gorgeous looking games, indeed, beautifully indeed. HD things, lots of neon colour and twisting circuits and, you know, in some ways fully realised backgrounds with actual buildings standing at the side and whatnot. When you try and put that all onto the iPhone, it's tended to struggle a little bit before. Mm. Uh, and what you wind up is with is a very, very herky-jerky frame rate, which is the biggest problem with Flash Out. As you've mm. probably gathered by now, this flame, this frame rate's not great. No. It's well jerky. And sometimes you can experience some jerk when streaming through Twitch. We've discussed this before. Uh, and it can be down, at least in part, to having to make the iPad or the iPhone work twice as hard because it's outputting video to a screen and outputting it here and you get a little bit of chug. This chugs anyway. 
Even when you're playing it in single player without being plugged into the computer, you still get nasty frame rate laggy stuff. And that's the problem because the moment that kicks in, you're like, this is horrible and slow and jerky. And it's the opposite of what you actually want from these games. The whole point of this is, oh, I'm going so fast, it's amazing. When you go into a tunnel, if you notice, suddenly mm. the frame rate picks right up because it's not having to deal with all those backgrounds and all that kind of crap. The moment you go outside, though, you get this. You get this kind of 10 frames a second nonsense. Mm, and, absolutely. Uh, it's a real problem. It, could... it is a real. It is a real problem because that's because the sense of speed is what we're here for. Yes, you know. Exactly. You know. Now, so we are getting some suggestions of absolutely fantastic uh, futuristic racing games that aren't Wipeout and F Zero. Right. Um, Roll Cage is the big one from oh. Big Turn Smash, and uh, from uh, oh, I've forgotten your name now. Uh, but yeah, like lots of suggestions of Roll Cage. Now, Roll Cage is amazing. What we're not mentioning is other quality futuristic races. Some of the sort of lesser known ones, Mega Race. I'm not familiar with Mega Race. Not not familiar with Mega no. Race. That was absolutely, uh, yeah, that was a game. Uh, what <laughs> else was there? Um, there was now Motorhead. Is it? I, I, I want to know if you remember Motorhead. That was uh, kind of like a PS1 no. era. That was herky jerky. Oh really? It. Okay. I'm talking about herky jerky. Um, uh, somebody. Well, also one one of the um, one of the racing series that is kind of futuristic and kind of ties in with one of the games that we've got. Um, coming up later on is Carmageddon. That's what I was going to say. Exactly. Yeah, that's another very violent. So it is kind of futuristic race. It's a bit Mad Max. It's it, a bit like it is horrible cars kind of strapped together with ugly bits jutting off the side of them and big machine guns on the top. Yeah. Uh, same same lines as Twisted Metal, where it's got that very you know that Twisted Metal became quite open world and wander abouty, but still it had that you know lots of cars with crazy weaponry bolted onto the side of them, letting you shoot as well as race, which was for me another big aspect of the Wipeout games, the ability to fire and actually attack your opponents rather than just race past them, the combat racer, which yeah. was something that you know you didn't get from most racing games. They're just straight up sensible racing, and I find things like Gran Turismo, whilst I loved the early games and I enjoyed it when I played them on the PS1 and stuff. After a while, I got bored of them because well, I'm, they're, they're a bit they're, they're a bit dry. Sort of John's worth, aren't they? Yeah, I mean they're very I, good I like if, them, you're a, but... if you're super simmy and you're into that stuff, then fine. But for me, like I'm not a huge car petrol head or anything, so all that like car porn, which is what it essentially is, like, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't really do an awful lot for me. Uh, they're very technically impressive, but I find them yeah, a bit dry, a bit dull. Um, and I like the ability to fly around at 200 miles an hour while blowing up people with laser cannons and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Call me shallow. Well, but no, that's uh, no, that's. If you can't do that in video games, where <laughs> can you do it? Hey, eh? yes, the heart wants what it wants. What can I say? Um, so here you go. Look, I'm in a tunnel. Look at this lovely sunny frame rate picks right up. It's all smooth Ooh, and lovely. lovely. If it was like this most of the time, we'd be okay. I'll also point out that I'm not particularly hot on the on the tilt controls. Lovely. Another thing, wipe out. People get put off by that franchise full stop because they find there's a very steep difficulty curve with Wipeout. Mm, and there is, because you walk into Wipeout and you try and turn your first corner and you just go bah, straight into the wall and you go, oh, oh, it's yeah. really difficult. Yeah. Uh, and it takes a while to work out that you have to turn quite away in advance with your air brakes and then scoosh around. It's more like jet skiing or something in that regard. You feel like you're on water to some in some degree. Mm. Um, so you need to get used to it. And people go like, I'm not playing this, this is balls. And because they just spend their time going boof, 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 boof off of the barriers. Like you're doing the crap lane in bowling. Like you put the little inflatable things down the sides so you can't, you know, for the little children. Ah. Um, this kind of mm, makes you feel like you you don't feel like you're in a great deal of control and over and it. it's and it's uh, the controls are slightly, you know the controls are yeah um, the sort of frame rate is a little bit boring and um, as sod almighty's asked a, a quick question here um, you know does this have in-app purchases and is it smooth on an iPad air I can't really talk about iPad air uh, personally I don't think either of us can but in terms of in-app purchases Oh yes. Yeah, this is this is a paid app as well. This yeah. is 69p 99 cents, but yes, there are in app purchases available for this. There um, are a whole bunch of them. <laughs> and uh, the idea like this shouldn't this shouldn't be smooth on an iPad Air because the iPad Air didn't exist when this was made, you know. They haven't even factored in that chipset. <laughs> this is running on an iPad 4. So this is a high end, you know, 5 ga like an iPhone 5. So this should be boss and it's not. It should be just It's not boss. No, no, it's balls. Mm. Um, so I'm. I think is this five S? We should just we should just rename this rename this stream Boss or Balls. I think, <laughs> I think yeah. that's just, that's essentially Cut to the heart of the matter. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's basically, beat yeah. around the bush. And also, I don't I don't think that the the ship design's very cool. It's not nearly as iconic. They, you know, they look like you know they look. 
are just awful. They look like <laughs> terrible little bits of design. And there's like nothing moving on them. There's you know so little actual animation going on. No, I agree. And that's a problem that we had with the Pokemon alternatives we were talking about, where like all of the Pokemon creature designs they start to blend into one. All those little copies of fake Pokemon, and it's, you're dealing with then thousands and thousands of creatures which look a bit like them, but not really. And you're like, well, I don't, I don't like this. This is kind of crap. Yeah. Um, and yes, these ships do not stand up. So in kind of, not starting a downer, but this is one of the things that made me think, I don't want to play Wipeout games on my iPhone. If they're going to be like this, then I'm not interested. I'd rather just pull out my PlayStation 3 and bust out Wipeout HD again and, you know, carry on playing that. Oh, man. wonderful. Yeah. But um, there are better ones. Oh, yeah. Which we'll be moving on to in a little bit. I just want to kind of blow up this guy if I possibly can. Die, you bastards. Blow him up. If you do like want to have a look at these, obviously you've got the information down at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. We give you the title and the price of all the games, so you can mm -hmm. find all of these, apart from uh, the soft launch one we'll talk about later, on the App Store at the moment. So mm -hmm. if you think, actually, despite what we've said, that this looks amazing and you want a piece of it, then you can have a piece of it. It's all mm. yours. Take it. Yeah, so go on, yeah. have it. Stay have it, I don't want it. It's but, been in the fridge for like two weeks. I know, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but for my money, I, I wasn't a big fan of it. It was a disappointment. But then I was, I was worried because I feel like inherently slightly hostile towards these kind of games. Because when it's a franchise that you love, and when you see people who are, you could argue, are ripping it off or just doing kind of pale imitations, you start to feel a bit like, oh, this is no, sorry, this isn't good enough. This is not, this is yeah. not pure. This is it's not because, up to spec. It's because they're, because they're taking something very special and unique mm. and making it making it cheaper, like commercializing it a little bit more, like make, taking it out of this out of this wonderful little place that you remember, you know, Wipeout 3, you remember the Mega Mall, and uh, you remember the corkscrew, and you remember nice. all of these things, and then you're like, oh, you've sort of cheapened this and boiled it down to something that isn't that experience. Yeah, so we were a little bit disappointed with Flash Out 2, uh, both 1 and 2, so I wouldn't recommend this as a Wipeout alternative experience, but if you want to, 69p, 99 cents, is out on iPhone and iPad right now. Okay, let me just throw out the placeholder. I should move this around a bit so we can move to the next game because I like to keep that nice little air of secrecy. Okay, we're going to pull up one that did get quite good um, reviews. I played this, I've played this one least, actually, so this is going to be fun for me to test something out. Mm. It puts a slightly different spin on it. Uh, here you go, I'll drop the placeholder. It's called Repulse, or Repulse. Repulse. So you can play these phases in any order, apparently. Already, look, oh, it's nice to see something smoothly going left and right. I'm trying the boot camp because I'm going to start at the beginning. Uh, right, you now have enough toolkits to build a power ripper upgrade for the buffalo thingy. Choose the hovercraft you want to race with. So there's already, look at that, that looks nicer, doesn't it? Do you not think? That looks pretty. And I can choose yeah. this one, I can choose the Yagana, and I need to oh, up, unlock the rest of them. So I'll run with the buffalo. Uh, you're using bottle, button commands, or I can use tilt, or I can use slide. Oh, cool, a slide control, that's interesting. I'm going to try tilt, because I was using tilt for the other race, so I'm going to keep it con con continuous, continuous rather, yep. uh, so that we're all using the same stites. Now, this isn't about blowing up your enemies, it's about energy gates. So you've got two types of energy, energy grates, one which is green and one which is red. They have a different polarities. The indicator above shows you uh, which one you need to pick and how many gates are needed to shift polarity. So mm -hmm. what will happen is it will say, get three green. So you have to fly three through three green ones. Then after that, you'll have to fly through three red ones. If you do the opposite of what it wants you to do, then you're in trouble. So I'm going to steer towards the red here. There you go, there's one red. I'm going to get another one. Two, keep flying, whoa. Okay. And I'm going to get another one. Here's another red one, boom. Now it's gone to green, polarity change, you see. So I have to now aim for the green ones or I'm going to suffer. Whoa, missed it. And uh, your time will start to suck, and I think your energy starts to go down as well. So there you go. I've got a green one. I missed the first one, because it's not very good. Oh, let's go back over here. Boom. And, oh, not that red one, but we want a green one. Oh, these, these, these touch, sorry, tilt controls are twitchy. Right, we're back to red now. Ah, oh, you see, I accidentally got the green one then. Ah, oh, twice. Balls. <laughs> this is tricky. Uh, let's go back to red. There we go. Now already you can see the frame rates much, much better. On this one. Much nicer. Yeah. So it can be done. There aren't any enemies on screen though. You're racing against time. You're racing against yourself uh, and these little polarity gates. So it's technically not having to do as much. It's putting the uh, processor under and the engine under less strain. 
so you could argue that, but mm -hmm. I don't care because it's just it's much much smoother. But yeah, I mean, like like you know, you you when you're a designer, you create a game that is that works towards the the platform. And if you can't fit a thousand racers on the same track, then you don't do a thousand races. You Agreed. you make it the one thing, don't you? Um, so this looks so much better and so much more in the camp of exactly what I want. It also feels like it's got that wipeout. Um, I would say Wipeout on PS3, that sort of era. It's got that rickety, just about holding on onto the track kind of feel. <laughs> yeah. Rather, rather than the floaty, I'm sort of magnetised to the track of Wipeout 1 through 3. Yeah. Uh, well, the problem with this is um, I'm finding the controls a little bit twitchier, like much twitchier than the ones in, in Flash Out 2. It's partially right. because we're going faster. It feels like we're going faster yeah. because of the frame yeah. rate dip. So as a result, I'm having to respond much more quickly. Uh, so it feels a little bit twitchy. I've also been playing another racer all afternoon with tilt controls, and it's different. It's like a different sensitivity, so it's bizarre shifting between them. Ah! Right, getting back to red here. Whoa! Uh, wrong polarity. See, that's cost me. Uh, and again, crap. I immediately steer towards it because it was green, and I like green things. <laughs> that's not how you play this game, James. Don't be a <laughs> moron. Okay, Incredible. Cool. Right, red, red that time. There we go. I don't know how many I need to get. Oh, good need chips. Needs to be green. Green, green, green. Green, 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 green. First step, finished a race. Nice. Result, so uh, my you rankings well are probably rubbish. But that's fine. Next track, moving on. So you get three boost charges, apparently, which can be stored simultaneously. So you can give yourself a little bit of a speed boost if necessary. Well, I've also got this other track that suddenly... This other vehicle's taken off. I'm going to try the other controls at some point with this as well. Mm. I'd like to try the touch controls and see how they fare. So, uh, so obviously, presentation looks a lot better. Looks, looks, uh, you know, like it's sort of uh, in terms of the stream itself, like the stream I'm, we're watching at the moment. Like, yeah. looks so much smoother than than the rickety old uh, flash out. Um, but I also like the UI a little bit more. It looks cleaner. It looks like all of the information that you actually need is presented a lot, lot faster. Uh -huh. And I, I, one of the things I've found with kind of subpar futuristic races is that I can't find the information that I want. To hand like easily, so there was a really great thing with the the first three Wipeout games where the the weapon that you had was at the top of the screen, yeah, and it always used to be with like Mario Kart and stuff like that. I'm sure it was with Mario Kart or some some of these other races. Certainly the poor futuristic races, um, they would have like weapon icons at the bottom left or the bottom right, and it would mean you would have to divert your attention down. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't be looking at the track that was coming up ahead. And I really liked it with Wipeout, where you could just like very quickly look ever so slightly further up than the horizon you were looking at. Yeah, I think the trick here is that, unfortunately, if you want to show that you've got a weapon, for example, you need to use the same button that indicates the weapon yes. uh, to actually press it and fire the damn thing. And therefore, on an iPhone or an iPad, it kind of needs to be in the bottom left or bottom right-hand corner, because that's where your thumb is, so you can press it. Yep. So there is there is that issue to consider. So it's slightly yep. different. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is uh, yeah, I, I do find this much trickier. This one mm. I don't. I'm not quite. I haven't grasped the tilt controls. I feel a bit clumsy with it's it. It's like the it's like the controls are just ever so slightly, uh, ever so slightly too twitchy. Yeah. Well, you see, recently they've gotten really good. Like especially the game I've been playing today. It's uh, you notice that they've kind of nailed tilt controls now, the accelerometer oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. So like the further back in the history you go, they can be, for my money, a little bit twitchy. Like people haven't quite got their head around them or haven't balanced them as well. Uh, whereas the re more recent games, they're actually pretty sweet. You have you feel like you have a proper sense of full control and you know it detects very neatly whether you're tilting a little bit or you know doing a huge massive big turn and you feel like you have a great control over the, the degrees, the fine degrees uh, of, mm. your, of your turning. This feels a little bit more like if I turn a little bit, it's a little bit, and if I turn a little bit more, suddenly I slam into a wall, yeah. which isn't quite so satisfying. Right? No, um, not not so good. However, I will try. I think I think because I got a crap uh, time on that one. Let me try new controls. Okay. So just just to see see what the arrow ones so are like. So you you figure out the controls, and uh, I will say that obviously if you are just joining us at the moment, if you're on the front page of Twitch.tv, then hello, we're at Spy and Pocket Gamer, and what we do is we like to stream iOS and very occasionally Android stuff. Uh, that's what we like to talk about. 
And uh, we do it here on Twitch uh, because um, apparently we like coming to the party without <laughs> without a bowl or without any food, or without any kit. <laughs> uh, so uh, yes, we we are slightly different to um, what what you usually see on Twitch. But um, hey, everybody's got a mobile phone. Um, so yeah, do click on through, come on through, and uh, hit that follow button if you are just joining us today because um, we we look at mobile games and today we're looking at futuristic racers, not wipeout clones necessarily because we're. We're keeping it slightly broader than that because there, there are a few Wipeout clones, but there's also a few sort of futuristic, more sort of just futuristic races that we want to talk about today, aren't there? Just kind of things that are because this isn't a Wipeout clone per se. Is well, it? it's, it's, it's doing something of... different. Yeah, it's definitely styled around Wipeout, and definitely, you've got the same yeah. twisty tracks and that sort of thing. But instead of you racing against like eight or seven other competitors for first place, you're Going through these little zones, these little uh, warp polarity shifting zones. Now, the thing that it reminds me of most is not a racer, but it reminds me of Ikaruga, which is that uh, shmup game, which uh, is really good. And it's also based around polarity shifts. So the idea being that you take control of your little uh, enemy craft who flies initially blue lasers, blue plasma, and enemies come down, and if you want to do the most damage, you want to fire blue plasma against enemies which are it's red, isn't it? Is it dark red? Uh, yeah. I think, yeah, dark, dark red enemies. They'll do most damage, whereas if you fire them at, for example, blue plasma at blue enemies, it doesn't do very much damage. So you have to pick the opposite polarity. And you can shift between those two colors yourself. So you can fire blue or red, and you need to constantly swap between the two to do the optimum damage to your enemies. Um, which requires you be really, really on the case. Mm. And, and it's very, very tough, but it's also hugely satisfying. And it's the same thing here. So I've got the red diamonds at the top, which means I need to get one more red, and then it will shift to green. There we go. And uh, you get rewarded for not going through any incorrect gates. So if you screw it up like I have been, uh, then you cost yourself bonuses. Like, there, I missed the gate, which is annoying. So I won't get uh, massive bonuses that I want. However, I've shifted to... Whoops, I took some damage. I shifted to the touch controls, and it is easier. It is easier with these touch controls than the tilt ones. Whereas in the other games I've been playing recently, actually the tilt controls I have felt to be a little bit superior, which is kind of unusual. So I finished it. Do I win this time? Is it, is it, is it, is it as a result? Gobby. Gobby. Gobby a result. Gives me a rookie rating. Says I'm alright. Oh, I've got to beat the time 2.15. Oh, I'm a few oh. seconds out. Ugh. Nuts. That's fine. Rookie. Right. rookie as Let's have a go. I'm going to try this one. In fact, okay. I can probably do some upgrade stuff now, can't I? Yeah. Let's have a look and see if that's possible. Oh, there we go. Power Ripper. Destroys barriers and other craft. Activated by boosting. Slightly reduces efficiency. But costs 10 of them things. I've got 20. Have I? Oh no, I don't have enough toolkits. I need. I've only got one out of twenty toolkits. Oh, that's balls then. Can I do it on the other one? Oh, I totally can. Yes. Yay! I can upgrade that one. So I've boshed something new. Arm to the chief on my buffalo. That sounds promising. I'm gonna have a bash at that then. And let us go for the button control again. That's the way to do it. Yes. So yeah, a lot better looking, a lot smoother, a lot better sense of speed than flash out to, and also. A slightly different take on the wipeout thing. This whole Ooh. polarity shifting sensor stuff. It becomes all about speed and accuracy and less about battling against other racers. Now, as you can see, a racer is appearing there. I don't know if it's just a random dude flying around or if it's supposed to be a competitor. I think they start turning up, if I remember, and just start getting in the way. It's <laughs> just start being sort of jerks about everything. Yeah, pretty like... much. Oh, hit the wrong one there. Oh, Screw man. It. That's annoying. See that, and you really have to be on the case, and you really have to be paying attention uh, and anticipating which which colour you need to be getting next. So I need one more. You start to get into a little cycle of going right, three of them, three of them, backwards and forwards, and and mm. without having to look up, you can kind of remember where you are. Or at least you can when you're good. <laughs> not not me. I'm well, really you're. Uh, <laughs> no. Sorry, I'm learning. I haven't played this one much yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, but oh, damn. See, that was the wrong ship. That was the wrong gate as well. You take a little bit of a hit and get a little bit frazzled. Still, it's it's fun to play. What do you think about the soundtrack? Oh, I can only very dimly hear it. It's the standard kind of thumping. Yeah. The thing with Wipeout is they had that amazing licensed soundtrack, which was kind of done with um, uh, the DJ Shadow and all that. It was part of a... Uh, What's Chemical Brothers and Prodigy and yeah, yeah it's all it, sorts of good stuff there. Had a phenomenally good soundtrack. Lots of back in the early days of like drum and bass. Back when was drum it, and bass was, was a cool thing. XL Records. Uh, no, it was oh, son of a bitch. The good one. 
The good there, one. There was some stuff from Warp on there, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there was, yeah, definitely. Definitely stuff from Warp as well. Like, so they had a, an amazingly badass soundtrack. And then other games, when they were doing Wipeout style games, they just stuck some generic drum and bass behind it, which was... And you're like, okay. That's techno. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's clearly techno. People. Yeah. Not drum and bass. <laughs> Come on. Sigh. Uh, so that's... In, you're never going to get reach those dizzy heights without a pretty big checkbook, because you need to be able to afford all that licensed music. So it's not going to be comparable, of course, but uh, if you want something that's a bit fast and a bit zippy and isn't necessarily based around weapons, uh, this is a fun alternative. And it's tough. It's a challenge. You really have to be switched on and pay attention. And you really kick yourself when you get the wrong gate. You feel like a dope. Uh, so if you do fancy the look of it and fancy something a bit different, it's called Repulse. It's £1.99 or $2.99, and it's available on the App Store right now, like the rest of them. So uh, that'll do for that one, I think. Two more to get through. Let me throw up the placeholder, and we'll move on to our next game, which is going to be... Yeah, screw it. We'll do this one. Okay, so when we went to the Big Indie Pitch, which was that event that we hold uh, as part of Pocket Gamer and App Spy, it's an event that we do as part of a conference where we look at a whole bunch of new indie games that we've never seen before. They all come and show it to us and do these little short pitches and we get to choose what we think is the best one. So it's a bit like Pop Idol or X Factor or something, but for games over the course of an afternoon. Uh, and there's less crying. Slightly less crying. Still a bit, obviously. <laughs> well, uh, there's, there's always a small amount of crying. Exactly. And this game, AG Drive, was the winner of the Helsinki one. Uh, because it's a bit Wipeout, but it is kind of by far and away the best Wipeout style game we've seen. At least in terms of visuals and presentation and controls. Uh, it's not actually out at the moment, it's out in soft launch in certain territories. So, for example, this I downloaded this from New Zealand. So if you have a New Zealand App Store account, you can download this for free right now and give it a test. But it's not in the US, it's not available in the UK, so don't try. Yes. Just to give you a heads you, up and a warning. You would have to go out of your way to do so. And you know what? I think maybe it's worth doing. Yeah. I mean, if you're like, if you're up for these kind of games, then yes. Now, this is this lassie called Gem, a little AI, is showing us through what you can and can't do. I've played this a little bit, but every time I get one of these things back on the iPad, I have to re-download. This doesn't have a cloud saving thing, so we're starting from the beginning once again. Let's have a look at our first ship. You can buy ships and upgrades in the garage, as you would expect. Now I'm going to put my finger on it and show you my first racer. You can already see this looks like better than the first two. Yeah, it this does. already outclasses the other games. Um, so you can choose some colours, provided you actually have them unlocked, which I don't. But there you go, it gives you an example what you can possibly get later on. You can purchase colours for little gems. Ooh, look at that. Very nice. Back. Alright, so. Let's do a race. Already, there you go. It lifted up to the top of the track Oof. there. Little classy transitions. And here's the track. Now check this out. Oh my god, this game is so good. <laughs> yeah, I know. Peter's really hot for this track. I have reservations about it, but you cannot deny. Look at that. Oh. Look at it. Look and at that's, it. Actually, that's actually there, a lot of it. Some of it's just a flat texture, but a lot of those buildings are actually 3D textures that are st standing out. Um, yeah, it looks way better than the other games. Just yes. so much better. So I put my thumb on the right-hand side of the screen to accelerate and the left-hand side to decelerate, and I'm using tilt controls. Tilt controls on this one, pretty good. Like, pretty nice, pretty responsive. Yeah. Um, racing against other racers, as you can see, more wipeout. Pretty full wipeout, really. Now I've initiated a turbo because I've accelerated without crashing into anyone for a while, so you automatically get a bit of turbo. And I'm in mid-flight! Badass! Woo! Uh, and I have taken first, Eliminate. rather quickly, because I'm mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is arguably the best one that we've encountered. The visuals are really impressive. Yeah. Like, and even though you can see them on the stream, they probably get a bit pixelated, because all this fast-moving stuff does get a little bit artifacty and pixelated when you're passing it through uh, a streaming software. Contender. So it never really Eliminate. shows it to its full potential, unfortunately. But if you imagine that, like, the more pixelated it looks, the faster it's going. <laughs> That's why yeah, it looks yeah. so awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just imagine it as breaking the sound barrier. And <laughs> that, 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 everything just becomes pixelated when you're when you're uh, approaching light speed. Yes. Um, That's this, just physics, guys. <laughs> this is absolutely physics. Like, I mean, so many things about this. It is currently soft launch, and and we would we kind of talked to the developer about this when we when we sort of pseudo discovered it, and they were sort of saying, well. 
it's a soft launch and not everything's in there at the moment that we want to do but ev like everything that we've seen so far of the game we've done hands-ons we've streamed the game before and we've done all sorts of bits and pieces with it I, I, mean, I know Pocket Gamer's written stuff about it as well yeah everything about it is just so it's on another level of epic like, for example, it is a little example. This is the menu screen. So the menu screen, you can see they're represented by these little hexagons uh, that are dotted all over. But if you actually look at the design of the UI, underneath the UI is the actual city that you're racing around. Yeah. So you can see a trap kind of, uh, one of the tracks sort of snaking around uh, from left to right down there. And as I move around, it's all in 3D. It's kind of actually there and I can zoom in and zoom out on it. Like. That's class. That, that is, is real class. That's well slick. And you, I'm in tier one at the moment, but you can see there's tier two and tier three, both of which are coming soon. We're not there yet. Here you get the different choices: elimination races, cup races, single races. Let's try a cup. See if we can do that. My ship probably isn't powerful enough, to be honest with you. Um, but we're going to give it a bash anyway. Uh, let's move to black. I'm going to buy the black color because why not? Oh, yeah. there's a purple one too. Yeah. I'm not going to. I'm clearly not going to bother um, racing this stuff again. Let's go back through to the. So, oh, we, you know, it, I'm keeping an eye on the chat. James, you're playing on the iPad. Uh, we're playing AG Drive. And um, one of the things that's coming up with this, and I think that this is this absolutely has to kind of be addressed. So Pac Maniac DK and Alex Gull have both basically said it looks a lot like Wipeout. Like, I think this looks the most like Wipeout. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. because it I, looks good. Because that's, it looks great. That's yeah. kind of the difference. It looks a lot like Wipeout. You want to make yeah. that ob observation because... It, Wipeout's a really, really pretty game. Beautifully smooth frame rate and really classily designed. This is really pretty impressive frame rate and kind of well designed. I'm leaving it on this cityscape stuff because look at all the lighting effects and all the, you know, it's now gone to a kind of sunset, dusk or dawn situation. And it looks lovely. It's well nice. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's play. Now you can see all the lighting Three, conditions have changed. Two, I now have one. a little a black kind of craft, a dust or gunmetal grey craft. Which looks kind of badass, and you can see the whole atmosphere of the tra track has changed because of the time and day. That's badass! It looks great! Now, apart from all the good gushing that we've been just doing there, mm -hmm, I yes. do have some reservations. Yes, okay, let's let's talk about them. This is a free-to-play game. It is. So, in order to get to the next levels, and in order to unlock more cars and stuff like that, you have to do a lot of races, do a lot of grinding, mm -hmm. and some currency, and some mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the only way that you can unlock the next. Uh, and it takes a long while to get there. Um, I, I have noted in the um, in the update notes on iTunes because we keep an eye on it every once in a while. Yeah. Um, they are tweaking how often you get paid, like how much, how many more credits you get, and they right. are tweaking that stuff at the moment. Finish. But you're completely right. It is a free to play game, and there is going to be grind or cough up some cash. Um, and that's towards like upgrading the, 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 the vehicles, isn't it? Yes, so you can obviously speed up your craft and you can uh, add little boostery bits and whatnot just to make you a little bit faster, a little bit stronger as well. I think there's an armor system, I'm not sure actually, but I can't remember if you get smashed to bits or not. I think you do, you have an energy system and you can improve your armor and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, let me get to my turbo, it's gone to night time now. I'm gonna launch that turbo, which is earned by me flying around, uh, going through the speed pickups and basically not hitting anybody. Being a good driver, essentially, is how you yeah. do it. Um, but look at this, it's nighttime tracks. Look at this. Whoa. Also, oh. it has the same problem as well of a limited number of tracks, at least at first, I think. Um, yes, they definitely. Cha they change the lighting on all of them, so it feels like a different track, but it's not. It's the same. Uh, but that's quite common with these free to play races. They don't doll out the new content quickly. Yeah. The idea is to make you play a bunch. There's there's definitely a few different tracks in there, like assuredly. Um, yeah. I've I think I've seen like three or four so far, and I I I'm I mean I must have put maybe like half an hour, forty five minutes into the the hands on. Um, so yes, like there are there are tracks in there, but no, you're completely right. That's how free to play stuff works. It's like, hey, you want to see more stuff? Then check it out. Yeah. Give us some cash. Uh, I think I think this is one of the few games because um, I'm you know I, li I like free to play games. I think this is one of the few games that I I almost would prefer that they went premium with it. Yeah. Just because I think there's the danger because this is a really really great Finish. playing game mm -hmm. and there's the danger that if they make it too free to play up the wazoo then it's going to ruin it for a lot of people and it's going to put people off. Yes, especially the people who like this kind of game and yeah. would consider themselves maybe core gamers. Yeah. And those it's are the kind of gamers that hate free-to-play the most. 
Yeah, so it's absolutely. Dangerous. It's it's like it's like for example, I I seriously believe that Real Racing Three is a great playing game, mm-hmm. but the I think the free to play stuff in it, whether or not you like that or not, it it ruined it for some people, and I think that this has certainly got that danger of. Is this going to be too much for people? Is 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 this shift to free to play too much of a, uh, I don't know, like a culture clash? I yeah. suppose. Well, see, here here's the problem. Right, I've gone and had a look at the upgrade sections, and you've got your engine upgrade. Like I've got some of those green gems that I can spend, but the upgrade, the very first one, costs three thousand five hundred gold credits, and from racing those, I've got what have I got? I've got five thousand three hundred and sixty. So I can buy this one. Let's say yes, I can. I can buy an, an engine upgrade. And I might as well do the turbines as well. Think I do that? Yeah, yeah go do on. the turbines. I'll use the... And I, there you go, here's the problem. Your bots are busy building a previous purchase. Yeah. Do you want it delivered instantly? Uh, let's have a look at the time. One minute and 43 seconds. So it's all this wait time and stuff. If you're a real Racing 3 fan, then you're, then you're used to this kind of thing. And you don't mind it, maybe. Um, and to be fair, like a minute and a half is no big deal. I'm going to do it right immediately because we're on a stream. And I've got the money and I don't care. Um, but if you're trying to get through the game quickly or if you're sitting down for a good long session, those timers are only going to get longer mm. and that kind of thing can start to irritate after a while. Like mm. Three, Even just stuff like we've two, any Angry Birds uh, Stella, which we've reviewed and was uh, appeared on the App Store uh, last week, like that's got massive wait timers in it. You get to about level 22 and then this bomb explodes and uh, what? you have to wait for an hour for what? the smoke to clear. A bomb? Yeah, yeah. the piggies drop a bomb out of an airship. Like, what? As, things as shit's got real do. with the piggies, hasn't it? I Jesus know. I, I, check out this. I'm all trench run. Look at this area. This is awesome. Love, oh. love this. Uh, yeah, so it's a bit weird, I grant you. But it's just a way for them to say, you can't play anymore for an hour until you either pay us some money or you watch a million adverts. There are a lot of adverts in that Angry Birds mm-hmm. Stella game. Like, ugh. It's a it's a drag. I mean, some people don't mind adverts, so they can just suck it up and don't care. I hate adverts. I've always hated adverts. You're one of, you're one of these people who would who enjoys finding a button that says, oh. "Want to get want to get rid of ads?" Yeah, I am the terrible person who would like ad block is a brilliant brilliant thing, even though it's not a brilliant brilliant thing because you're depriving people us. of yeah <laughs> us being me. I'm taking food from my own mouth, yeah. <laughs> which isn't great tactic for living, but no. um. Uh, you know, that, uh, it, I just hate it. I find advertising so unbelievably obnoxious. Mm. It does my head in. Mm. Um, I'm going to do one more of these and then we'll move on to something else. But, like, as I hope you can see via the, via the stream. I know it gets a bit pixelated when it's going fast, but it's easily the slickest, smartest uh, of these Wipeout style games. And it's not even properly out yet, so it's not really finished. Yeah, so obviously if you've just joined us, uh, then first of all, hit that follow button. That's the first thing that you do. Hit the follow button, for heaven's sake. Because uh, that helps us uh, well, helps us find out how much interest there is in mobile games. Turns out there's a little bit, as a small one. A couple of people have of... touchscreen mobile devices and yes. play games on them. Who knew? And, and they they are interested in content for them. Um, <laughs> but the other thing is that uh, if you have just joined us, then obviously we've been playing AG Drive. The game is only available in soft launch in New Zealand. You would That's have right. to go out of your way to create a, a New Zealand account to do it. There is a guide on how to do that on Pocket Gamer. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do fancy being a little bit nefarious, uh, but otherwise we are yet to find out when um, uh, when the game will release globally. We'll, as soon as we find out, we will of course let you know on AppSpy.com and PocketGamer.co.uk. Totally, and this is part of just a general look at futuristic races uh, that we're covering. Mm-hmm. So games a bit like the Wipeout, but also some stuff that's a bit more left of centre, uh, which we're actually going to cover next in the final game uh, of the show. And then what we kind of want to hear from you is what do you think is the best and Regardless of things that are faster or prettier or shinier, it's like, do you want to play these kind of games on your iPhone? Are you after Wipeout style games or would you rather play this sort of thing on a console and save your iPhone or your tablet for something a little bit more tactical or something like that? Because I think Mm. that's another issue to consider. I don't think all game formats work brilliantly uh, on iOS. And there's a big debate that always gets brought up around first person shooters, where Mm. some people like them, some people don't. I'm not a big fan of them. But uh, other people say that they're brilliant uh, on touchscreens and they work just fine. Um, I think racers, personally, I think racers can totally work on iOS. Now that they've got that tilt control stuff down. Yeah, the tilt control absolutely. gives you a nice analog feeling. Because there's always that problem with touchscreens where it's very digital. So they tend to give you a left and right arrow. 
And on a, on a racing game, like we're way past that binary left and right thing. We've had analog sticks, and we used to be able to go Finish. a little bit left, and then full left and full lock, and have that kind of sensitive control over just how how much of a full lock we're putting on the steering wheel, if you like. Mm. Um, and now, what, this well, provides that. Yes, tilts. absolutely. Now, one of the things Alex Gold is saying, and it's kind of interesting, so he says, I need wipeout on mobile. And obviously, <laughs> I, I think the, 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 sad, the sad reality is this. Studio Liverpool, the company that actually Three, made two, um, that one. made Wipeout, uh, uh, it was originally called Fignosis or Cygnosis. Cygnosis. Yeah. Cygnosis. I saw I always pronounced it. I might be wrong. It was my favourite studio on a uh, Amiga. Uh, I was an Amiga kid. Cygnosis absolutely. were the winners. They had now, like Shadow of the Beast and all that stuff. Amazing. They were like they were incredible British, like an absolutely amazing British studio, and uh, they worked on Wipeout and they owned they kind of owned Wipeout, but they really pushed Wipeout as a PlayStation brand. Unfortunately, they turned into Studio Liverpool. Uh, for Sony, uh, which was the first party, and then Sony decided to um, shit can them essentially, yeah, which, was... Uh, which was probably oh. not not great considering they made the best racing game on PlayStation Three. Uh, but they, uh, yeah, so um, that's probably uh, even if uh, Sony's uh, mobile um, mobile gaming efforts were any good. Uh, I don't think you're going to see another wipeout. I don't think you're going to see another wipeout for a while, unfortunately, on any platform, which is a bit, no, a bit there sad, were, really. There are rumours of them coming back, of Studio Liverpool being reassembled, but I wouldn't necessarily count on it. Unfortunately, yeah. I think the problem was they rode the wipeout licence into the ground, and they didn't really do anything else. They tried... Um, there's videos of them... Uh, of sort of like concept videos that they put out and they, they were thinking of doing a game they, you can find them on YouTube they're thinking of doing a game that was basically um, like Shadow of the Colossus meets Ico oh really? yeah there's like video concept renders of stuff of like here's this cool thing we were working on and they've just kind of come out and, and you know they've been part of like artists uh, portfolios and stuff like that so they were working on stuff but it was all just Sony rocking up and going, yeah, could you make a, maybe a Wipeout game for Vita? Is that, is that <laughs> Another Wipeout game, that'd be good, yeah. alright, lads? <laughs> so. Well, so it's not going to happen, but if you do need uh, a version of Wipeout or a cipher for Wipeout on your iPhone, then here you go, AG Drive is probably mm. your best bet, right, but it's not out in the US or the UK at the moment, New Zealand only in soft launch right now. But when it goes global, we'll let you know. It is free to play, be warned. Um, so it's going to take a bit of grind, but in terms of like gameplay and presentation and stuff, it's kind of hands down the best mm -hmm. version of it that, that we've found yet. So what's next? So there you go. Finally today, we're going to look at something that's brand new. Uh, and uh, I spent this afternoon doing the review for, which will be up tomorrow uh, on App Spy's YouTube channel and the site itself. It's a futuristic racer, but it's a little bit different from the other racers we've been playing today, which is nice. Uh, so let me present to you mm -hmm. Battle Riders. So, here we go. Now, moving away from your, what I would suppose call Wipeout style games, this is something different, okay? This is a much more Destruction Derby, Carmageddon, uh, battle, what's the other one? Destruction Derby, Carmageddon, Twisted uh, Metal. Twisted Metal, yeah, Vigilante. That, yes, yeah. all of those. It's a bit more like all of them. Now, let me see if I can upgrade anything at this point. I don't know how much I've, I've, I've paid yet. Do how much money do I have? Oh, I do have some money. I can. Okay, good. Upgrade. Oh, no, no missiles. Oh, I, I, I'm 100 pounds away or 100 credits or whatever the hell it is. That's fine. Let me just uh, give me a quick respray. I'm going to change my skin because I like this one. And having messed about with this, unfortunately, I was doing this on the iPod earlier this afternoon and I haven't put the saves over yet. So I've been playing a little bit and sort of know my way around. This, uh, James Lee's saying, it looks like an IAP game already. It's not. It's, it's not, not an IAP game. It looks game. like one. It's, it pure, really like one. <laughs> it's pure premium, my friend. It's yep. £1.49 or $1.99. There are no in-app purchases whatsoever. And you get uh, upgrades at a relatively stable rate. So yeah. it requires you play a bunch to up upgrade, but they are not trying to take extra money from you. So don't worry about that. I'm going to use the tilt controls on this because this, I like the tilt controls on this. I think this nails it pretty well. So as you can see, taking control of these great big uh, death race... 3000 style vehicles so they all look like they've been like smushed together in a sort of Mad Max kind of way uh, which I actually quite like. You're racing around these somewhat grey tracks they're a bit concrete -y and a bit frankly a bit bland. The track mm. design as in the way that the environments look is probably the least interesting thing about it frankly. Um, but the handling is really good and the actual racing is also good because you have to go up against these other races of course. You can slipstream to, in order to speed yourself up. You can 
Try and blow them up with cannons, which you control uh, individually. So you have weapons on either side of your car. A left one, here you go, I'm firing that, and a right one, just to show you the difference. You can fire them independently, and you can upgrade them independently. So if you want a missile launcher on one side and a machine gun on the other side, you can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of badass. I'm just going to fix my car. There was the repair icon at the bottom of the screen. That cost me credits to do so, which means I won't upgrade as quickly. But I will get to complete the race, which is very, very handy. Um, blowing up cars is really good fun. <laughs> <laughs> Which it I think is a rule. Yeah, it? exactly. There yeah. you go. Just wrecked a car, and that was sweet. Yes. It, it's pretty much, as a rule, is always a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I don't think there's been a single explosion <laughs> in a video game that I haven't liked. It hasn't been kind of neat. Yeah, no, it's true. Uh, so I'm kind of ahead of the pack now, because these are one of the earlier, earlier missions. Um, it's very smooth. Again, I hope the flame, frame rate transfers okay onto Twitch. I think it looks all right. Um, but it's a very, very smooth racer, and the sensitivity of the controls are brilliant. This is the best tilt control of the afternoon, frankly. And mm -hmm. I've been playing it for a while, and I'm kind of accustomed to it, but the way that you can very, you know, gradually twist left or right, and then do a full immediate, like, 90 degree turn, depending on how, how hard you twist it, it feels very natural, it feels very accurate, very responsive. I like that. That's dead good. Uh, on the downside, like I say, the tracks do look a bit bland, and there aren't that many of them, certainly near the beginning. You find yourself on the same track an awful lot, or a reversed version of it or something, and that's always a bit weak. I'd much rather there was a, a wider selection of courses for you to race around, um, but at least at the beginning there kind of isn't. It does open up a little bit later on, but you will be stuck at first racing the same tracks sort of over and over. But the races themselves always feel like there's some jeopardy. Like... The rubber banding, you know how some racers, they can, you can basically crash into walls and you get pushed back to last place, and then all of a sudden you find yourself in, again in first, like 10 seconds later. Oh, the Mario Kart effect, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's not really present here so much. So, like, if you race and you really, really mess it up, you really have to fight your way to get back to first. Like, it's not just going to give it to you again on, within five seconds. You have to work for it, and there's a good chance you won't make it. You're not going to get that uh, high score again. So now I've got the uh, enough credit to buy a missile launcher. So I'm going to buy some missiles. Boom. There we go. Let me go back. Now if you look at the car, I've got machine guns on one side over there and over here. Lovely big missiles. Ooh, sexy missile launcher right there. So uh, let's give that a go with the next race, shall we? And as you, as you said, like this could have been a free-to-play racer with upgrades like this. This is the kind of thing you say, well, you can race a million times, mm -hmm. or you can give us 69p and you can have your machine gun uh, straight off the bat. No, but they don't do that. No, it's not that. It's a, it's a, it has to be earned through play. That's the only way to do it. Oh, That's you mean watching. the old-school method of it's doing the old, things. The old-fashioned way. Now, here, here, let me test out my missile. Let me have a go here. Ba boom Yeah, slick. Uh, I always, oh crap, mine, I hit a mine, hadn't done that all afternoon, nuts, that's annoying. Nah. So I've got a machine gun on the right hand side and I've got a missile launcher on the left. That's the way the controls are working. I really like, I really like that there's this dual weapon. Yeah, I like that too. Wait for it to yeah. lock on. Bam! There he is, down he goes. That's satisfying. So I kind of wanted the machine guns to be a bit more powerful instinctively at first. I was like, oh, I wish they had... I wish I had big explosions, but mm -hmm. actually, as you upgrade the weapons, there are plasma cannons later on and things like that. It does get much beefier. I'm going to try and, I'm going to, yeah, blow mm. that guy the hell up. That's always satisfying. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> but I just like the steering. Like, it... It just, it just works. Yeah, the racing games, a lot of it comes down to the control. I mean, frame rate and speed is one thing, but controls are very, very, very important. If you don't feel like you're in control of your vehicle, it really spoils the whole racing experience. This is really good. This makes you feel like you're in control. And it's got it's got a different aesthetic tone to the rest of the games that we've really been playing. Like yeah, it's not it's... future, it's not cool, it's not neon. It's this sort of heavy metal, rocky, grungy, yeah, like post-apocalyptic uh, sort of post thing. Yeah, post-apocalyptic sort of like horribly grey. Yeah. You know, basically it looks a little bit like Cardiff. Bollocks. <laughs> Oh man, that's cold. Cardiff City Centre is really nice. <laughs> Cardiff City Centre is nice. Sorry, Newport. There we are, Newport. All right, there you go, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nobody, yeah. literally. I don't even think people from Newport would argue. Um, <laughs> no, probably not. But, but yeah, like, it's Ooh. it's a, it's a bit... Yeah, it, it's it's a nice change, you know? Like, yes. a lot of these futuristic races tend to go for the over-the-top Designers Republic-esque, um, that, that sort of a futuristic look, whereas this is a, no, stuff's rubbish. Like, <laughs> like have fun racing. 
Yeah, it is a bit grey, so yes, I, I will concede that. The tracks are not the most interesting. You do get some more later on, don't worry. But uh, at first, yeah, I, I completely agree this with the game. Uh, spoilers, we give it, give it an 8 out of 10 in the end. Same thing with Pocket Gamer, where it's like, it's good, the racing is really solid and it's fun, but it's obviously not perfect, it's still got the flaws. So, for example, we'd love there to be a multiplayer mode online. That's kind of tricky to implement in races. They don't all have them because you need to have a really, really, really good internet connection and yeah. no lag, especially with high-speed races. Otherwise, you know, it's kind of near impossible to do. I still mm -hmm. remember racing with a Wipeout Pulse um, wirelessly with my friend who had a PSP. That was kind of fun. Oh, so, yeah, all that stuff's... Oh, man, well, it works. That stuff it's is great. awesome. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But it's but difficult to implement, especially over online connections because, you know, lag and all that sort of stuff can really spoil the fun. Um, so we'd like there to be a multiplayer section, and I'd like there to be more tracks, and I'd like it to be a little bit less great, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes down to just the pure experience of racing, I feel like I'm in control of my vehicle. The tilt controls are some of the some of the best I've played, actually, really, for racing games. I mean, the real racing three tilt controls are pretty sweet, mm -hmm. uh, but it's the best tilt control racing uh, out of all the four games we've played so far. And so I know it's visually less flashy than the other you know, the Wipeout style games, but it's actually sort of better playing, I think, to be honest with you. Which might seem dull, but genuinely, when it comes to the pure games, this is kind of fun. I actually like it. I know it's got dull level design and everything, but uh, it's fun. It feels good. That's mm. that's the difference. The, 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 yeah, absolutely. Like, the controls feel spot on. The actual, like, car combat feels great. One of the things I have noticed, actually, with, with more and more play of Battle Riders is that everything's on one flat surface. There's, like, yeah. there's no hills <laughs> whatsoever. Well, especially once you're used to doing a bit of wipeout or something. And yeah. You've been, you know, used to zooming around 360 degrees. I think the difference is that, like, I think this game probably plays the best arguably, like, uh, AG Drive plays pretty brilliantly as well, but arguably plays the best, but in terms of a stream, it looks perhaps the dullest. Mm. So I can understand why you might be watching the stream going, oh, it's just going around, there's another grey track and everyone looks yeah. the same and it's boring. But it feels better than the, a lot of the other ones. Like, I, and I know that's difficult to communicate, but it does. It's yeah, like, when you compare this with something like Flash Out, even though Flash Out 2 looks like, you know, uh, visually sort of maybe a little bit more spectacular and except of course for the frame rate it's dramatic, than certainly. Battle Riders yeah. you know the yeah like the controls just feel so much better like it just feels more responsive and accurate and the weapons feel uh, even the piddly little machine gun that we've had complaints about like even the piddly ma little machine gun feels like yeah this works a lot better than than the weapons that work in that so mm. I feel more invested I feel more connected to my vehicle uh, in this game and while I certainly don't think it's perfect, oh ow, that was very good, uh, I do think it's actually one of the stronger games in terms of a pure racing experience, it feels mm -hmm. better. Um, it's very new, it came out last week and we were all kind of pleasantly surprised because first glance you oh yeah yeah yawn dull, it's like it's kind of, it almost is echoing a little bit of the burnout style, not quite so flashy and it's sort of a little bit futuristic. But if I had to com compare it to something, it looks a little bit burnout, and the power-ups and everything, they look a little bit like uh, Blur. Remember Blur? That game that came oh, out yeah. from Bizarre Studios? That yeah, was we're talking about this. Yeah. I should that, get that. That was really good, but nobody bought, so they yeah. went bust. Yeah. That was a good game, and the power-ups kind of look remind me a little bit like that. What was, what was that other futuristic one that came out at exactly the same time? Oh, and, uh, Split Second. Split Second, yeah. yeah. So that was quite fun for a that bit was all right as well. too, but I, I wasn't so keen on that. You could destroy the buildings. Oh, the that was so cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I would always prefer Blur, personally, but, like, neither of them I don't think did very well, no. <laughs> commercially speaking. No. Uh, so it, it caused the studio, one of the reasons the studio closed, which was a bit of a shame, but I think they're coming back now with something else. Geometry Wars 3 is appearing. I <clears> bloody <throat> love Geometry Wars 2. Geometry Wars is amazing, one of the best multiplayer games ever. Love it. Do you, know, do you know that's out? Do you know there's a geom geometry wars on uh, on iOS? Like, no yeah. one ever talks about it, but it, there totally was one. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't the same though. I no, it, it was, wasn't. Was it actually them that did it? Yeah, I want to say it was actually. Yeah. I didn't know if it was some weird like not clone or something, but maybe it wasn't. See, Ooh. I want that vehicle. It's in front of me. He's got a cool vehicle. He's got some. Because you can buy new vehicles as well. You absolutely you? can. Yes, there can be new cars available to you. So don't worry, you're not going to be parting the same thing all the time. Uh, but yeah, for me, this is probably the most enjoyable, even more so than AG Drive, because even though it looks great and it's very wipeouty, 
the free to play thing puts me off a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Whereas this looks quite uh, quite switch. Someone's saying my sister drives like this. How very dare you, Top what, Drops? Awesomely. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, destroying everyone in her wake with ma machine guns and rocket launchers. That's incredible. And listen, not smashing into the barriers, that's just a recommendation that's given yeah. to you by the Green yeah. Cross Code. So I'm fairly I mean, I don't drive, so but I'm fairly confident that's First place. Works. First place, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Shut now, now listen, James. Yeah. Um, What's the best thing that people can do if they've only just started watching Pocket Gamer and Apps Buy? Well, they should probably send up some kind of flare and then yep. write our names in the sky. And after that, might is. as well follow. Might as well click yep. the old follow do button no, and, and stick around because we're going to be doing iPhone and iPad game-based streaming every day of the week. Weekdays, yep. Monday through Friday is what we do. It starts at 5 p.m. if you're in the UK, 9 a.m. if you're on Pacific time or 12 midday if you're on Eastern time. Uh, we try and be as kind of neutral as possible time-wise so everyone in the world can have a look at some point. But we're here every day. So we'll be always on for about an hour, hour and a half, um, and we'll focus on different things. Today's been kind of a, a genre buster sort of affair where we pick games from a specific genre and take a look. Wednesday we do Eye on the App Store, which shows you all the new releases that are going to be coming out on Thursday. We get them a day in advance because we're smug like that, mm -hmm. but we show them to you so you can have a look at them and see them in advance as well. Fridays we do a regular recurring thing with Monster Hunter Freedom Unite where we all play multiplayer, myself, Peter and Harry from Pocket Gamer. We have a grand old time uh, and try and kill some massive dragony beasties. Um, today, this was the Futuristic Racers one. Hope you enjoyed the look of it. And maybe maybe you saw something you'd like to have a go at. Mm. They're all available right now. You can check back at the stream and also find hands-on videos and reviews for most of them up on Pocket Gamer and App Spy if you want a further look. But I think we'll leave it there for today. Thank you for joining us and we hope to see you tomorrow for a little bit more iPhone and iPad streaming on the App Spy Pocket Gamer Twitch channel. See you later, fellas. Bye -bye.